You're listening to TGIF Geocaching Radio. It's almost Christmas, and this year, the Seven Days of Geopodmas is a special daily audio saga continuing the adventures of Tiny Tim and the Treasure Troops. Be sure to catch up and follow the events from day one. Geopodmas Day 3 begins now. Lily appeared suddenly, and with a thud, she stumbled and landed right next to her geocache. This was her very first official time riding the wave down the cache line. As she gathered her thoughts at what just happened to her, what she saw, that roller coaster of a ride along a thick, dark line, weaving up and down and over and around until she popped through what looked like a black hole and landed barely on her feet. She almost thought it was a dream. But she came back to reality as she saw Tiny Tim bounding over at great speed from the portal she'd just entered a good ways away and barking excitedly as he approached. It had worked. The portal zeroed in almost perfectly on her somewhat empty geocache container that she placed in a quiet corner of the portal station, and she rode the wave, in whatever dimension the cache line operated in, straight from the portal to here. She watched as Tiny Tim skidded to a stop next to her, and laying there before them was a navigator disc, pristine, waiting to be used to return a passenger back through its entry portal just over yonder. Well, she said to him, It looks like your mission is off to a good start, Tiny Tim. You can call me Tim, he grinned, tail whipping back and forth. But now you've got to try to fix that navigator so it'll lead me to Sir Maximus. Do you think it can? Lily paused a few seconds. Tim placed the spare red and white magic hat next to the disc. She glanced back and forth between them and said, half to herself, there's only one way to find out. It was dark and quiet. Out from a swirling portal, the little clank popped a wobbly little guy. He landed on a thin strip of metal, slightly sloped, and he had to steady himself really quickly or he'd fall, well, down. It was nighttime and he could barely see a thing. Nicky, an odd chap made of a hard rubber, adorned with little coins of varying sizes, two beady little eyes, and with short stick-like limbs, bobbled a few times before he caught his footing. His eyes adjusted to the dark, and with the moon shining overhead, he eventually made out what he was standing on. A long stretch of bent metal, more than two deathly feet off the ground. Farther down the metal he saw a post, and just behind him was another one. Then he remembered what it was. It was a metal guardrail, those enormous walls of metal that humans used to keep their huge vehicles safe on the road along bends and where the ground fell quickly to the side. Nicky grew nervous, suddenly realizing the treacherous position he was in. His legs chattered a bit and he quickly dropped to his hands and knees for stability. Carefully, he turned around and crawled towards the glint in the moonlight, the navigator that had dropped from the portal gateway as it poofed closed. Thankfully, it hadn't slid down but rested on the slope, waiting to be secured. He didn't want to lose that. Just as he laid his hand on the disc, he heard another swirl and some jingling. Glancing around into the darkness, He eventually caught a faint wisp of fog and a little puppy wearing a red and white hat. That puppy, it looked familiar. Was that... Tiny Tim shifted his hat and pulled out his own navigator from underneath, secured safely during his jump. This was his third search jump now, using the navigator that Lily had tweaked to attempt to locate his mentor, Sir Maximus. He'd stashed the spare magic hat back at headquarters safely, but so far each jump had shown no sign of success. No Sir Maximus. Where Tim had appeared on the pavement, once the wisps had faded, he spotted a little nickel slightly embedded in the ground. Hey! He heard a voice call from above. Are you Tiny Tim? He looked up toward the voice. That's me! And you are? I'm Nicky! I can't believe it's really you! Tiny Tim did have a bit of a reputation among the treasure troops, but he didn't feel special. He was just a little puppy doing his duties. He clawed at the coin and managed to free it from the pavement. Then looking up and seeing so many coins on Nicky shining in the moonlight, he called up, Hey Nicky, you want another coin? Nicky was all about the coins. He loved seeing that small change in geocaches, and he wished he could just make change appear out of thin air to leave in them. He was still just a toy, but to him, coins like nickels gave that treasure hunt a little more value. And so when he was rescued from a geocache and recruited to the treasure troops, he was overjoyed to find he could literally do just that. Find a geocache, push a button, and boom, coins practically fell from the sky. 
He was especially excited lately because the humans had recently caught on to another way to pay it forward and help others with geocache treasures. A while back in one geocache, he found a little card left by a human explaining this mission the humans had begun. Many geocachers had started paying special attention to coins they found in geocaches, often trading them for little trinkets, but collecting the loose change. Oh, it wasn't for themselves. They'd total how much they found, and at the end of the year they would donate it to a children's hospital called St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The trend really caught on in their community, and many geocachers even pledged to double or triple the amount they found over the year, donating it to help the sick children and the hospital taking care of them. They called their efforts Coins for Kids. So of course this was right up Nicky's alley, and he wanted to make sure that there was plenty of change to go around. Nicky was excited that Tiny Tim found another nickel, but he shouted back, You bet I'd love another one, but uh, I just got here and haven't found the geocache yet. I'd welcome your help if you got the time. Tim had all the time in the world. Time was his middle name. Well, his first, and just without the E. The arrow on his navigator wasn't really indicating anything yet, just like the other jumps, so he picked up the nickel in his mouth and poofed up to the guardrail. Of course I have the time, he said to Nicky with a wink. They both took a look at Nicky's navigator disc. It was pointing along the guardrail, so they cautiously walked step by step. Well, Nicky was still crawling, until they approached the first post. The arrow was still pointing along the rail, so they kept pushing on. Down the metal slope, they couldn't see anything but black. Who knows what laid down there in the depths. Soon the arrow began to turn slightly, and as they approached the next post, it was practically singing. They were right on top of it. Nicky grasped the edge of the metal and laid flat. He peeked over the edge and caught sight of something dark and rectangular sitting in the gap between the metal and the post. I see something. That's gotta be it. Tim poofed again, just down a few inches, the hat really was convenient, and appeared next to the black box. He tried moving it, but it wouldn't budge. Must be a tough magnet, he thought out loud. Nicky responded, It is. I found a few of these before. You need to push on that little spot with the ridges so the lid can slide off. If you can do that, I can signal back to headquarters and start the restocking. Tim had his own strategy. He gripped the edge of the lid in his doggy teeth and started jerking his head back, as a puppy would do playing with a toy. And slowly, the lid slid, bit by bit, until the contents were visible. This one held only a tattered sheet of paper with some human writing on it and nothing else inside. Perfect, exclaimed Nicky ironically. While he fumbled to get the navigator in position, Tim flipped the nickel into the box. Nicky reached over with the navigator and held the button. Seconds later, a little swirling cloud appeared above the container and right on cue, a couple of coins, a dime and a quarter, clinked into the box next to the paper, joining the nickel. Perfect, echoed Tim. Tim loved seeing the troops' missions in action. Occasionally, he jumped around just to lend a hand. It reminded of his time with the human presenting challenges to help spread some Christmas cheer. He reminisced about the Christmas tree bomb challenge of 2018, the next to find challenge of 2019, followed by the dear 2021 challenge, a way to focus on some positivity during the human's worldwide pandemic. But that was the last he saw of the human because that's the year he returned to headquarters with the magic hat the human had found. Tim pushed the lid closed on the container. All done here, Nikki. Safe travels, and tell them back at headquarters I said hi. Thanks, Tim, Nicky waved. It was a pleasure working with you. But just then, they felt a vibration, and it started growing. Then a quiet hum grew in intensity. Tim was in the shadows, but up above, Nicky was suddenly very visible as a beam of light engulfed him from the other side of the railing. It was a human vehicle, and it was coming fast. Then Tim remembered. He left his navigator back on the pavement where he picked out the nickel. Almost immediately, he jumped back to the edge of the pavement. He didn't want to get run over. But just as he reappeared, the vehicle sped by and he spotted the navigator, kicked up into the air and flying over his head. As if in slow motion, he saw it return to the ground, bounce once, and then disappear into the shadows where they had peered down. He couldn't lose it. Nicky watched from on high, seeing the famous Tiny Tim jump into action. What an inspiration. Tim bounded to the edge of the pavement, eyes following the arc of his navigator disc, even as it faded into the shadows, and then as he dashed into the grass without losing speed. And then, all he saw was one big jump as Tim leapt into the air after his disc, 
and disappeared in the shadowy depths. Nikki watched, wide-eyed, staring into nothing. He had no idea what happened to Tim, but somehow he knew he'd be okay. Oh, what a story he had to tell people back at headquarters. With his mission here done and the coast clear of humans, he set his navigator on its edge, gave it a good hoof to set it spinning on the metal, and moments later, his gateway home beckoned. Carefully rising to his feet, knees no longer clattering, he inched forward, the coins he donned reflecting the white glow, and stepped inside. Right now.